What brought you to move on from Mikhail? I think it's uh, numerous factors, right? When you're, you're weighing up the, the situation we find ourselves in as a team, as an organization, the timing uh, of such. And then, you know, it's, it's a difficult decision because Macau was a focal point of, of this organization for the last year since we did the trade. So um, not an easy decision, but at the same time, when you have an offer like we did uh, from New York, I think that sets us up on a very, very clear direction and pathway to continue to build this team with sustainable success, and that's that's the ultimate goal here. It was reported for a <clears throat> while that you had been turning down deals for him. Was this just a better deal, or was uh, uh, did something did something change that? No, I mean, thinking? look, there, there's no shortage of interest in Mikhail around the league, right? For the player he is, the person he is, and obviously the contract he's on. So, uh, but you know, in terms of this particular deal, this was by far. Um, the best deal uh, for our organization at this particular time to do it, and uh, hence. Was that a deal that, I guess for lack of a better term, you were sitting on for a while? And if so, did he express either a lack of confidence in what was going on here or a desire to leave for whatever reason? that kind of made you change your mind on this deal? You and Joe. Yeah, no, the, the f for the first part of that, Brian, um, no, we were not sitting on this deal for very long at all. Uh, um, Leon and I talked for a couple of days on this thing, and it moved very, very quickly. And you could tell the, how interested they were in, in adding Mikhail to that group, which obviously that's been talked about for, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, and Mikhail didn't know until I called him and told him, say, hey, look, we're, we're getting down here. So there was, I think it's been reported that Mikhail wanted to leave or requested a trade that could not be further from the truth. I think that's just not in Mikhail's character. It's not who he is. Uh, and and that, would, that definitely did not happen. But he was, he was told by me when I called him up and uh, let him know that we're at the uh, two-yard line. You said initially timing was part of this. Was part of that the fact that the Houston deal was available? Like were the two kind of contingent on each other? Do you see them as kind of connected? Yeah, they're, they're absolutely great question and, and they're absolutely connected. You know, I, I think when you look at doing the deal we did with with the Knicks, um, that was really only possible by getting, you know, controlling our own destiny to a little bit more where we get the, our picks back from Houston. So being able to do those two deals simultaneously, uh, if you will, certainly helps, you know, you know, send us on that pathway that we talked about. How important was it to retain a guy like Nick as a, as a homegrown talent and, and where do you see his game continuing to grow? Yeah, very important. I, I think, you know, I give Nick a heck of a lot of credit for seeing uh, the next steps he's taken year by year with, with his game. Um, and it's, it's, it's great to find a guy in college and, and I, I give our, our draft process a lot of credit. BJ Johnson, who's run that for the last few years, did a heck of a job in, uh, in evaluating and finding Nick and being able to draft Nick where we did and now keep him and uh, uh, over the course of these last couple of years of development, you know, that not only Nick has participated in, but with our coaches stuff. So it's, it's great to have homegrown talent here. I think Nick fits in a variety of different pathways, you know, we want to go. He's young. Uh, I, I think he's still scratching the surface in here, and, and just um, I just loved his overall approach to him wanting more and more and more in development. So now, you know, with some of the changes to our roster, I think we'll see even more from Nick as, as we move forward. Speaking of the roster, obviously now with, I guess, the rebuild fully here, I guess what would be some of those next steps you may be looking at as far as just where this roster can go and just kind of what are maybe the next moves for what you'd like to do? Yeah, I think we have to be patient. You know, this, this, we're not going to be in a hurry. There's no, this is not a sort of a where well, you have to trade this or you have to make this or you have to trade these assets that were the draft assets that we've got or anything like that. I think this is something that we uh, will continue to be strategic on and uh, let it play out. You know, free agency is still going, and, and I know it's moving it sort of snail's place around the league right now, but um, that's still going. So let's see what that, how that shakes out over summer league and so forth, and then into the season, and we'll go from there. But you know, this build, um, you know, do I think it's going to take time? I mean, I think we'll be strategic in it, but I, I do think being in this market with this, you know, uh, amount of draft assets, you know, we've done it before. And so, again, I think we could, you know, not that it's going to be expedited by any means, but I think, you know, it's, I don't think it's a long process either. 
What's it been like having a new head coach as you navigate free agency and these changes to the roster? Great. I, I've really thoroughly enjoyed Jordy and, and the entire coaching staff here. I think you can see the energy in the gym You know, now that they're practicing for summer league. So that's been terrific. The sweat equity. This this coaching group is, is putting on the floor with our guys. There's a different there's a different feel, different vibe. Every coaching staff comes in with its with its own sort of culture and, and vibe, as you will. But um, I've I've been really really thrilled with how this group and, and specifically Jordy is approaching this. And you know he's got his uh, work cut out for him right now with, with with Team Canada. But it's gonna be great to go there and support him. And so we're taking a, a group down there to, uh, to to see him in Vegas as well. How much of the sort of acclaimed nature of the 25 and 26 draft classes was a factor in the decision making, particularly the Houston deal? Yeah, I mean, that's always a factor in it. I mean, we're always looking two, three, four years ahead, you know, so to try and, you know, navigate a pathway. And I think when we're looking at this not holding our picks, obviously that would have been detrimental to those two draft classes. So, um, you know, now we know we have quite a number of picks, uh, you know, especially in 25. We'll see how we navigate that. But we're excited about, you know, what the future holds for not only our college scouts, but how we build this up and, and through, through the draft. Sean, you guys got Nick re-signed early, but is there any updates you can give us in terms of where the team currently stands with its other free agents? Well, the hope is that uh, Trendon will be back. I mean, um, we, we would love him to be part of this group, so that, that would be a priority for us. Um, the rest of it, I think we're just kind of letting the dust settle a little bit on free agency, seeing what happens around the league landscape, and, and, um, and then we'll navigate that you know, as we will. You hadn't done a deal with the Knicks, the Nets in general. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, is it, I imagine there are some teams you could probably text a guy and you, you get right to a real negotiation. When you have never done a deal with someone, was it slow at all? Is it awkward? I mean, is it? Uh, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. I mean, Leon and I have known each other for you know at least a couple of decades, so th there's there's no shortage of communication there with, with the Knicks. And, I, and I, again, I'm not worried about doing a deal, you know, with them. We we do a deal, you know, that we feel like is the best deal for for the Brooklyn Nets moving forward, and, and we thought that was that was the right deal at the right time for you us. You didn't have to ask for his phone number then or anything? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can reach him. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I can reach him. <laughs> Sean, the first, when you came here, obviously the team was in a rebuild, but you know, much different not having control of your own draft picks mm -hmm. and now also having a lot of draft picks from other places. When you compare you know, how you did at that time versus how you can do it now, how do you think you know, that will change your approach if it does at all? Yeah, no, look, I think there's great lessons, you know, as we, we built this the first time. It took a couple of years, we built through offer sheets, we built through cap space, um, being creative in some of those, uh, the signings that we made then, you know, we'll take that and try and, you know, implement the same thing as we do it now. But again, we didn't have a whole lot of draft picks back then. So um, I, I do know BJ and the rest of our college scouts are extremely excited about the opportunity that they have in front of them and, and how we do it. Again, it, and it, it sounds a little mundane, but we'll be strategic in how we continue to build. We'll, this time we can build through the cap space that we'll have. And, and also it's a new CBA. So I think that affects everybody a little differently. And I think having flexibility moving into this new CBA and the new realm, because nobody's quite sure how it's going to be. I mean, you look at the free agency right now and how it's affecting different teams. So for us to maintain that flexibility, you know, into the season is, is pretty important for us. This isn't quite the same as when you're trading KD and, you know, at that point you thought you were trying to compete for championships mm -hmm. and the like, but you were pretty like clear at that time that you still wanted to compete. You still wanted to try to make the playoffs and mm -hmm. all of that. And like Mikel was going to be a big part of that. Like, just from an organizational perspective, what did it take to get from kind of point A when you're on this one path to kind of say, all right, we have to kind of look at this from a different angle? Yeah, look, I think you have to look yourself in the mirror. And as an organization, you have to look and say, okay, what's the best path for us moving forward here? And, and how, how do we do this? And how do we have that sustainable success that we want? So um, when you're able to, you know, garner that amount of draft assets, you know, over the course of the last year, I think that's that, that's going to help us in our trajectory long term and so forth. So now you, you mentioned competing. It doesn't mean you know I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Jordy is not going to want to compete. Sure. I mean that's that's in his DNA to compete. So um, he'll go out there and whatever the roster may look like, these guys will try and compete, and it'll be an incredible opportunity for for some of these young guys, you know, and the vets to go out and and you know, show the world what they've got. You mentioned Jordy being with Team Canada for the past mm -hmm. week or so, like. 
Uh, you knew this was going to happen, but what has it actually been like day to day when he's not been here? How in the loop has he been? How, how does it work? Very much so. I mean, I think we talk uh, every day, and he's he's in, in complete conversations, you know, communication with with the coaching staff here. Steve Hitzels is is running the summer league team right now out there, so you know we're completely in sync you know between front office and coaching and and i know geordie's geordie's watching it all on tv as well but again you know we're watching his practices as well so <laughs> yeah. John, when, you know i think a lot of people obviously were expecting that mikhail would be here and that you guys were going to stay on that path when you guys were you know in negotiations with geordie was it discussed that this is a potential route that you guys could be going and that things could you know look a lot differently yeah, great question. And I, and I think it's very important to be upfront, you know, when you're hiring a coach or any staff member for that matter, for them to know, look, hey, look, there's a variety of different pathways we can go down. And we knew the flexibility that we had in terms of the roster, the cap, the salaries that we have, that this could be one of them. I mean, we're not going to shy away from that. So he, he knew well ahead that, you know, this was an avenue that we could be going down and was and has bought in completely to not only when we first signed him, but, you know, to the outcome now. At any point, did you get particularly close to making a kind of, you know, a move for, say, another star to, to, to bring here to play with Mikko? You know, we, we look at everything. So, you know, obviously we wanted to add talent to this roster over the course of the last year, and we continue to, you know, look at those opportunities and be very opportunistic with that. Um, at the same time, you know, this pathway affords us the ability for really, again, that sustainable success I've talked about. And, and I think, again, an, an offer like this from – from a team, you know, we're, we're not going to turn that down. What do you expect to see from Noah, Derek, and Jalen in year two? <clears throat> well, I, you know, it's it's health for one thing for 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 Derek for sure. Um, that'll be great. I mean, they're they're out there on the court right now, so there's there's no uh, hindrance there to, to his health. But I think from from Noah's standpoint, you know, we've all been pretty excited about how he finished last year, and also now taking that and. Can you take next steps during summer league? Um, summer league is interesting because it's not always the best fit for for players, you know, and especially bigs. You know, I mean, it does doesn't re always suit bigs. But I think what Noah's added to his game, you know, over the, playing with the G League and 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 you know, I think Mufon and the group down there have done a heck of a job, you know, developing him. So. Uh, it's exciting to see what he's done this summer, and of course, Jalen. Jalen showed glimpses that you know he started for us. You know, so it's it's another great opportunity for these guys to go out there, have the ball in their hands more, show what they've worked on, and, and compete. And I mean, that's going to that's going to be sort of the narrative for our summer league team. We want to go out there and compete at the highest level. With Derek, obviously, I think last time we spoke, you said he would be available. Is there any limits on what he can do this summer? No, at this point, we're going to throw him out there. And I mean, he hasn't played in two years. So I think that's, you know, on a consistent basis. So, you know, I think we have to temper that a little bit. But at the same time, I, you know, I know the young man is itching to get out there and play and get back to form. So that's exciting for us to see how it goes. And, and hopefully not only for through summer league, but, you know, you know, into into the off season and training camp and so forth and, and let him let him just take his time a little bit. But at the same time, you, you've got to throw him out there. This is kind of related to the question about Jordy's hiring, but when you're negotiating <coughs> with Nick and being upfront with him about the mm -hmm. ways the roster could go, did that affect, do you think that affected his decision making at all? How did that maybe weigh on him? Yeah, you know, probably a good question for Nick. I mean, we were upfront with Nick and, and told him that, look, the pathway of the team, you know, we're, we're not going to be adding, you know, the stars right now that you want. And I think f for us to have success long term um, this is the, this is a pathway that we could go down so he knew up front which which is um, you know again always good to be honest and so forth and, and he wants to be a part of it it's going to be a great opportunity for him to show more which uh, I think we're all pretty excited about when you exit as an example when you're saying okay we're not going to be adding the stars <coughs> that you want I'm curious whether the pursuit to look for a star whomever that is I'm mm -hmm. not going to name names but um, did the did the clarity that you weren't going to be adding a star to pair with Mikhail, did that influence the decision, okay, we'll pivot away and go in this direction? We would have yeah. tried to go this direction, we can't, now we'll go this direction. Well, it didn't even really get to that because we did the trade first before we got to sort of, you know, into the opportunity to sign, you know, add, add stars. I'm so sorry, I meant over the course of, say, this either last summer or at the deadline um, over the course of the year. That's what I meant. You know, I, I think, yeah, 
It's a good question, Brian. I think we're weighing the options of like, you know, what's the best thing timing wise for, for the franchise here. And I, I believe that this was the best pathway for us to go down right now instead of waiting. And we could have kept waiting. I mean, there's no shortage of people that, you know, want to play with, with Mikhail and, and, and the likes because, you know, he, he's a heck of a talent out there and we'll, we'll miss him. But at the same time, this for us, you know, leads a very, very clear pathway and direction for us, how we're going to build. And, and we've, we've, this group has drafted well, and we hope we continue to do that. Did anything you saw from him last season make you sort of second guess, you know, whether he was, you know, it was a good year, but it wasn't what he did in the two months after he came? Did yeah, you, no, I mean, he, he's a heck of a talent. There's no, there's no question there. I, I wouldn't even want to second guess Mikhail and so forth. I mean, he, he, he's a t talented, talented young man, both on and off the court. Adds a heck of a lot to the locker room, your environment, pleasure to be around. So, uh, yeah, nothing's, nothing's changed in that. You know, any team would be lucky to have him. You know, Cam Johnson resigned. Cam Johnson re-signed last year. We know how close he was with Mikel. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, I'm sure he's seen his name in trade rumors and the like. Like, what's kind of your read on how he's kind of taking this new direction? Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had some conversations with, with all the vets on the team because it, it does weigh on people. And, and I, I don't, you know, just try and sort of breeze over that because it, it's, it's a family and you want to say, hey, this is a close-knit group. It's a close locker, locker room in there. And, and, you know, when one of their own leaves, it's, it hits home. It hit, it's, it's, that's reality of pro sports. So I think you have to be upfront and honest with it. And I think, you know, everybody on, in not only this team, but I would say around the league really realizes, like, look, it's pro sports. I've been in that locker room. I, I understand what it looks like and what it s seems like. And you do have to move on and, and so forth. But again, you want to be upfront, honest. And ultimately, the goal for us is to find continuity, right? And whether that's through a group of young guys building and growing here together, adding pieces in free agency that we have the opportunity to do or, or trade for guys, which we can we can do. So um, the flexibility for us, you know, is 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 pretty exciting, and intriguing moving forward.